an immaculate conception that comes from Ileda and Olufun, Oludumare is the divine immaculate conception. And that holy one, that child that comes from the black Madonna, Isis or Iset, from the union, spiritual union with Osa or Osapus is Horus according to the Greeks, but in the Medunetta his name is Heru. So we always have the God and the Goddess. If you will go into Kemet or to Egypt now, you will see where the white man always tries to chisel the female out. He always tries to destroy the black goddess and leave the God by himself. Because you ain't got no God unless you've got the God. You don't have no balance unless you have the two of them working together for the balance and the harmony of the universe. All praise is due to Allah. The, the one God, and we're on the fact that we always believed in that one God. Right. And so there in the holy city of Abydos, at the sacred temple of Seti Wan, in the so-called hieroglyphics or in the Medunetta, we find the first creation story where the God, the black God, what kind of God? Yeah. Where the black God, Ptah, through authoritative utterance, and divine will and creative force and power gave utterance and called and willed the universe into existence. And so the Holy Quran says that he said, Kum Fayakum, Kum Fayakum, be and it is. Be and it is, Kum Fayakum. And the Bible says, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth, and he said, let there be this, and let there be that, and let there be light, and there was light. And the light, it says, then began to harmonize with the darkness. So let there be light, kum fire, kum, be, and it is, is the authoritative utterance that the Africans, do you read in the hieroglyphics or the Medunetta, that Ptahotep, through authoritative utterance, willed and called the universe into existence. Yes, in another part of Africa, we called him Amin. In another part of Africa, we called him Amin Ra. Right. In another part of Africa, we called him Aten. All over Africa, we believe in the one God. Yes, we have always believed in the one God, the one power and force behind the universe. The white man ain't never had to teach us nothing about no God. <laughs> white folks don't believe in no God. The only God that the white man believes in is himself. When he says on the back of the dollar bill, in God we trust, it's him that he's trusting in. When it was time to go and raid Noriega in Panama, he didn't call a meeting of the Joint Chiefs of Staff and the Negro Uncle Tom boot-licking, butt-licking, puppet Colin Powell, the Negro and his staff, and call them all in. And say, we're getting ready to attack Panama. Let us bow our heads and say a word of prayer. Do you think Bush did that? Do you think he said, our father, who art in heaven? Do you think he did that? When he got ready to attack Brother Maurice Bishop, the leader of the New Jew movement in Grenada, do you think Reagan and the boys called a meeting of the Joint Chiefs of Staff and sent it in Congress and had a moment of prayer before they did it? No, and if they did, they were doing it to themselves. They said, load up the troops, the guns, and the ammunition, and let us go. When it's time to launch one of their spaceships, they don't say, let us bow our heads. They say, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6. They start the countdown and counting, right? He believes in no God except himself. And so he will make up a mystery God, but then he'll give you a son that looks like him with blonde hair, blue eyes, and pale skin, and tell you that if you see the son, you've seen the father, because the father is in the son, and the son is in the father. So if you see a white man as the son, your subconscious has to suggest to you that the father must be white some kind of way, also to produce a boy like that. Your mind has 
to say that to you. And here, as we look at it, we again have always believed in one God. In fact, all of the other people of the earth get their religion from us. The black, the brown, the red, the yellow, all of them get their religion from us. I got a bag back there with a big book in it that I need right at the table. Back. It's in the kitchen, I think. Brother Jamal knows where it is. No matter what land you go to, they believed in what we had given to them. You go among the Mexican-speaking people, they believe in a black savior, a black messiah, who had a strange set of circumstances surrounding his origin into the world, who comes from a black Mary or a black Madonna. I just need the book out. I didn't want to give Pier 1 a, a plug up here. <laughs> Pier 1 Imports a plug up here. <clears throat> Among the Greeks and the Romans, they always believed in a God that we had given to them. In Greece, it was Zeus. And Zeus was a black God. In Greece, they also had Apollo. You get to the Apollo Theater in New York. They had Apollo. Apollo was a black god. In Rome, they even worshipped a black woman as the goddess of Rome, Isis. In France, they worshipped her. Because when you study the etymological root of the term Paris and Paris in French, you will find that it is linked to the root of the name Isis and that at one time the city, back down the wheel of time, came from the name Isis. I'm talking about Paris. You had Fuhai of China, Zaha of Japan, and I mentioned those who speak Spanish. You had Quetzalcoatl. You had Krishna of India, which means the blue or the black-skinned one, blue-black-skinned one, or the purple-skinned one, Krishna of India. And you see many groups of white people throughout America today who worship the black god, Krishna. You see them with their head shaved and a little ponytail or a little ponytail, running up and down the street, beating a gong and hollering, Hare, Hare, Hare Krishna, whatever the hell they say. <laughs> they believe in a black god from India named Krishna. Everywhere you went in the world, Zeus, Apollo, Krishna, Buddha, all of them black. So we gave religion to the world. We gave morality to the world. We gave ethics to the world. We believed in an ancient system of morality and ethics and spirituality called in Kemet, Mayat. Mayat, truth, justice, order, harmony, balance, and reciprocity. Mayat, and the Mayatic balance that black people had in the black nation, in the black society, is what attracted the white people of Europe to follow this moral code called Mayat. Now, we who follow the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, and I bring you greetings today from his spiritual son and his representative in our midst, the man who is the fulfiller of his work and the extension of his work, the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan. I bring you greetings from him of Assalamu alaikum. When you study these two men, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, or the most Honorable Elijah Muhammad, and the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan, you will find that they teach us of a book that is called the Old Testament, the Torah, and they teach us of the Injil, of the Bushra, or the New Testament, or the Good News, or the Gospel. They teach us of this entire book called the Bible, but we don't study this book from a white theology perspective. We study the Bible from a black theology perspective. We believe all praise is due to Allah. Really, when the truth is told, we believe the scripture when it says God is spirit. And those who worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. But we know that the spiritual is dependent on the material. And the material is dependent on the spiritual. That the two are dependent on each other. That you would never know the spiritual existed if the material didn't exist to manifest the spiritual to the material world. 
Huh? And you would never get any real function and benefit out of the material unless the spiritual was working in the material and